in any way live. It's a little bit late on Saturday night. It has been one of those wonderful weekend days that was apparently beautiful outside, though I wouldn't know. For some reason, I never made it outside. <laughs> but everybody else in my family did, so that's good. Now I've stayed inside and just kind of chilled, just kind of relaxed. It's been a tough week. It's been a week filled with uncertainty. And that's what leads to my discussion tonight. How do you deal with uncertainty? You know, we've got the dog thing that happened Tuesday. We don't know what's going to happen with Captain, whether we can even afford to do anything to help Captain, uh, what what our future is going to be with uh, our dog. And we also don't know what's happening with our house because Tuesday we also found out our landlord is going to sell out from under us after we've been here 11 years. And it is time for us to move on. Uh, we're pretty certain, we've discovered this week, that we don't really have the means to buy this house, or any other house for that matter, which is fine. Uh, don't mind renting someplace else. We just want to find someplace close. But here's the deal. We don't know where we're going to end up, whether they'll accept a dog or the cats that we have. We don't know when we'll need to be there because the house hasn't gone up for sale yet. We don't know if he's going to give us 30 days when he puts it up for sale or 30 days when he sells it or 30 days when he just feels like it. So, you know, we, we're just kind of stuck waiting on him and the decisions he's making. You know, and there's always uncertainty in life. We, we all have situations where we don't have the control. We don't know how it's going to turn out. You know, if you're in sales, uh, you've got uncertainty all the time because you don't know if your buyer is actually going to buy until they do. And then you, then you hope they're happy with what they got so they don't try to return whatever it is that they bought. Uh, you know, if you've got kids, you've always got uncertainty because you never know how they're going to act or what they're going to do, uh, what repercussions are going to be created by what your kids do. I and mean, let's face it, life is uncertain. So how do you deal with it? There are some good ways and there are some bad ways, and I have dealt with uncertainty uh, both ways, uh, multiple times, over and over again. You know, the, what, what I often do is the negative way, which is, and, and really the negative and the positive way are similar in that dealing with uncertainty makes us want to create certainty. If we can control the situation in whatever way, then we're going to feel more comfortable with the uncertainty, right? But oftentimes, the only way to create certainty is to opt for an outcome that isn't necessarily what we want. It's just the one that we know we can create, even if there might be a better outcome if we are more patient or if we wait for somebody else to throw in their two cents or to throw in the decisions they're going to make. So you don't necessarily want to control the situation to a negative outcome. But that feeling of control can sometimes be soothing enough that we do something that hurts us in the long run, just have that short run feeling of control. What's better is if we can take a look at the outcomes not necessarily long-term, but short-term that we can control. We can control, hopefully, the way we feel about the situation. Maybe we can control a step or two uh, before the final outcome happens. You know, maybe if, if we're in the middle of a sale, we can control the offer. We can sweeten the offer. We can follow up with the prospect we can create a better atmosphere and we can do all these things to try to control at least what we can, even though we can't control the final sale. Whereas if you go the negative, the other way, you just stop following up and you just go, you know, I'm not, this guy's not going to buy. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I'm just going to drop it. And then you create a bad situation for yourself, but you feel that control because you have completely, sabotaged it. You don't have to worry about it anymore. You don't have to be concerned that the outcome won't be what you want because you know the outcome isn't what you want it to be. 
but that control makes you feel better about it. Instead, think about the outcome you want and work on what you can to create that outcome. You know, for me, right now, you know, with our dog, we're still working and trying to find out what costs are involved, but we're also trying to figure out what kind of house we're going to end up in. But since we don't know when we have to go, we're a little bit leery of finding a house. Now, Christy is all over uh, the internet trying to find houses that we can get. And we could potentially get places as early as April 1st. But I don't know if we really want a place April 1st. If we want to just uh, preempt everything. I mean, right now, if we gave 30 days notice to our landlord, we'd end up paying double rent for a week if we went in someplace April 1st. I'm kind of looking at like sitting back and going, okay, I'm going to let him control it for a little while. And then I'm going to take control when I want to take control. I want, I, I assume we're not going to be out of here by April 1st because it would have given us 30 days already. So I'm thinking it's going to be May 1st, which gives us a month and three and a half weeks to come up with answers in terms of where we're going to go and where we're going to come up with the money for the move for the down payment, for the first month's rent, everything else. Now, if he doesn't give us notice and we haven't found a place, I really don't necessarily want to move May 1st because school isn't over until the middle of May. So I'm willing to wait until June 1st. But I'm not going to wait to see if he's going to give us 30 days notice. So if he hasn't given us 30 days notice by May 1st, Chances are I will give him 30 days notice on May 1st. And no, I don't think anybody involved in this transaction is watching this Facebook Live uh, or has that much interest in, in what I would be doing anyway because he's going to do what he needs to do regardless of what I'm going to do. And it's not really a poker game and we're not waiting each other out. I'm just trying to make the best decisions for my family. And he's trying to make the best decisions for his pocketbook. So I don't think what, what I want to do or what he wants to do is necessarily going to affect either one. I just want to do what's best for my family. So I'm going to control that to the, the degree I can. In the meantime, I'm going to try to control some of the intermediary steps by finding ways to make some additional money. As I've said before, by you know, obviously making more sales in my J-O-B, my, my actual daytime job where I have commission and can control to some degree how much my commission check is going to be, but also in trying to increase my coaching. You can get a few more clients coming in so that I have a little bit of excess income so that I can move the way I want to move and not have to really worry about it. That's really just a whole bunch of me telling you what I think I'm going to do. And it's how I deal with uncertainty. I don't want to, I don't want to work three or four steps ahead and I've got Christy to do that for me by looking at all these houses. I want to look at what I can control right now. You know, what are we going to do financially? And maybe start packing a little bit so that we're more prepared in a month and three weeks or two months and three weeks to have a smooth, uh, easy move. Of course, then you have that, that uncertainty of who the heck is going to help you load the truck and unload the truck. But we'll cross that bridge in a few more weeks. I'm sure I've got plenty of people out there willing to help me, right? Right? You hear me? Yeah, I hope so. Next time you event uncertainty, think about the outcome you want. Think about what you can do to control getting the outcome which you want, of what you want. Even if you can't control the exact outcome, what can you control along the way to make the outcome more likely to occur in your favor. The thing you don't want to do is let uncertainty take over, cause you to make rash decisions just so that you can feel control or to create so much anxiety that you don't do anything, that you become paralyzed. Deal with uncertainty in as positive and proactive a manner as possible and you will find yourself winning anyway at life and winning anyway, at least now in the moment that you choose to. 
It's been long. It's been philosophical. It's been fun. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to see if I can bring uh, Bumpy back with me. We'll do Stumpy and Bumpy tomorrow if all goes right. Have a great night. And we're done.